What's up, guys? Welcome to Resellers Life. I'm really excited because we are doing a new series with Sarah Styles. So Sarah is awesome. She has a lot of stuff going on. She has a digital products. She has three kids and a husband, and she's in the middle of moving, and she's got a lot of stuff going on, but she still wants to build her online business. And I think this is a good opportunity to start a new series of helping somebody make $1,000 a week net. Now, the best part of this series is we currently do not know how that's going to happen. There's a lot of stuff going on with Sarah. And so what I want to do is let people know, do not be overwhelmed. Everyone is, is, it's never a good time ever. I want people to recognize it's never a good time to start a business. There's always a lot going on. Very few people have unlimited money and unlimited time and unlimited energy. That's real life. So we're going to get into it. The way this mentorship is going to work is we're going to check in once a week. I want Sarah to come up with one to three actionable items to get done that week. Um, seven days is plenty of time to get one to three major things knocked out of the way. And then also we're going to focus on what's going well and what's could be improved or what's not going well. And that's going to vary week to week, depending on what's going on. So Sarah, why don't we introduce you first? Um, where do you live and how's it going? Hey, um, I'm Sarah from Sarah Styles LLC. I live in a suburb of Denver, Colorado. Um, and I'm excited to start this journey. As Chris said, it is never a good time. And right now is absolutely not a good time for me. We are selling our house in a week and a half, moving to a new house, remote learning with three children, um, you know, in the middle of a, a crisis. So it's definitely not a good time, but I'm still committed to my business and I'm excited to be here with you and do this journey. So let's start with something that's going well right now or something that you're doing right now that you can do. Yeah. So um, right now I am focusing on cross-listing. eBay get, gives 50,000 free listings. So I'm taking full advantage of that to not have to pay to move all of my Poshmark. I, I am more on Poshmark, moving all of my Poshmark, getting it all onto eBay so that I can have everything now on both platforms. So I am focused right now on cross-posting. So I know you have a dashboard related to Poshmark, but are you currently happy with your, your Poshmark sales with the items that you have on there? Um, when you mean, cur not currently because of everything that's going on, mm. um, before currently, I think I have maximized my potential on Got Poshmark, it. which is why I, I, I'm making a good amount on there. But I think by having those items on a second platform, a second set of views, it can double that, if not more. So that makes me happy because I always want people to optimize one channel before moving to the next, which I think you have. Your closet looks like a pro. So if once you have a closet set up and it's optimized, it might be at that point, um, you're ready to go onto a different platform. But I see a lot of people who haven't mastered one and they keep adding more stuff to their plate. But for you, I'm glad that cross-listing is starting to go, uh, to go well, and that's going to lead us into what's not going well. So it's part of our current situation, but what is not going well or a challenge right now? Um, inventory. <laughs> it is 100% inventory and I'm mm -hmm. starting to slightly freak out. I have a no death pile rule and I am kicking myself for having that because now I have no inventory. Um, and also before all of this happened, we were getting our house ready to sell and listing our house. So I wasn't sourcing even when we could have been sourcing, um, you know, a month ago. So I have no new inventory. Um, and so I'm slightly freaked out about that. Yes. Not slightly. Slightly is like I'm pretty freaked out about it. So that's totally fine. And so the one to three things we're going to work on this week are related to that. I know a lot of people are in a similar boat right now. Even if you have a death pile, it's best to be as close to zero as you can. Not having inventory is fine. Having a lot of inventory that's not listed is worse in my opinion, because you have that money tied up. So this week, um, normally I would ask you for you to come up with one to three things per week, but I'm going to assign a couple things to you. The first thing is going to be list 10 ways you can get inventory without violating shelter in place um, in categories that you actually like. So before this conversation, we had mentioned that you maybe do not want to sell tractors perfectly fine. So if you don't want to sell tractors or uh, face masks, then maybe we can go and something you do like to sell, maybe high-end designer clothing, 
might be a good time right now to reach out to some consignment shops and say, maybe you're closed. Do you have inventory that you need to list? I know a brick and mortar lady in Chicago who had to quickly convert her 3000 item brick and mortar store to a Poshmark closet because she has $4,500 in overhead and the mall is closed for two months. So she's probably looking to launch some inventory, maybe even close and get rid of that inventory. Today, I went to a typewriter shop, which was closed. I called and said, hey, I have eight vintage typewriters. Do you want to open so I can drop them off? And he said, okay, leave them in front of the door and I'll slip a sl slip under and we don't have to come within 10 feet of each other. And um, it was great. So that I want you to think outside the box. So next week, I want to share 10 ways you can get inventory. I will share 10 ways you can get inventory and that'll be an incredible way to get ideas flowing. You live in an area with fantastic um, uh, thrifting. So do I but we can't thrift right now. Okay, the next thing I want you to try is I want you to put an ad up on Poshmark. Okay, so this is, we wanna start selling people's closets that maybe are in a tight situation or wanna quit Poshmark. Um, I picked up a 300 item closet and a 600 item closet this year and it has been fantastic because I'm looking for people who love shopping but hate listing. So. Usually people who love shopping also love taking photographs because they want to show off, but they don't want to run a closet. They don't want to do the bookkeeping. They just want it gone money in their pockets. So they can go shopping again. And if you, if we can find two ladies near you that crush it at the Goodwill bins in Denver, once this pandemic clears over and they're like, we'll spend eight hours a day getting the best items for you. Bingo. We can get those people and we can start optimizing the time. I'm sure I can find a couple of those in Denver. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we have so, a lot. So the ad, I'm going to help you write an ad so that we can find the right people. Um, the key for hiring people is going to be how clear the instructions are. So when we write the ad, it's going to be somewhat hard. I always like to make it hard because I don't want losers apply for my position. So I'm like, this is the example. You find an item in your closet and you send me the pictures in this order. And if they can't even do that, and I'm and this is the best when they say, do you want me to take pictures in on my bed sheet? Do you want me to use a light box? When people start asking those questions, that's the right person because they're looking for exact instructions. If someone says, doesn't follow the directions and they send you pictures that look horrible, that's an easy way to sort that person out of it. So we're looking for, with our goal of reaching $1,000 per week net, we only need one part-time helper and then consistent supply. So I know you live in an area where there's the good stuff already. So we need a system to get the stuff coming to you and then a system to list it and store it. And that's a lot, but so for this week, those two things I think are going to be good enough unless there's something else that you want to work on, but you have a lot going on right now. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, we're not moving for a week and a half. I have a full week until I have to really pack the entire house. Okay. Um, no, I think those are probably good and it'll help once we get moved. I feel like I'll have a plan hopefully in place to have inventory or at least somewhat have inventory coming in. Um, I do maybe as like a side, if I have extra time work on just building up my YouTube and getting it a bit more consistent, um, mm -hmm. in maybe a week or two after we move. Um, but just kind of getting more consistency there and building that up. And I want to overview this for everyone listening. I'm a big fan of the 50 to 100 items a week model and then spend the rest of your time working on stuff that can generate a residual. So even if you could do 500 items a week, to me, that's sort of trading money for time. You're just listing and then selling, listing and selling. I would rather you spend 50 to 100 to spend the majority of your time working on replenishables like a YouTube channel or a digital product that Sarah is working on. So I think it's great for everyone. I'm going to link her information in the description below so you guys can check out her channel and her social media because I want you to see somebody who's building different types of projects. Right now, we're in a very weird situation where maybe 10 to 30 million people might be out of work in the next couple of months. So those people are going to be curious, what is it like selling? They're going to sell the stuff in their closet. They're going to run out. 
They're going to be looking for other resources and people to teach them what to do. That could be you. And in person is magical. So there's going to be some person in Denver that that would pay, easily pay like $100 an hour for Sarah to show her the ropes in the beginning. This is a real thing. So if you guys are out there building your skills, I want you to get really good at a, at a really small, tight, profitable shop and then use those skills to either learn wholesale. Say, for example, Sarah, what's one category of women's clothing that you like to sell? Um, I mean, it's not clothing, but purses. I love high-end purses. Okay. So let, let, let me give you an example. Let's say you have a relationship with a local outlet for Michael Kors. And they say, Sarah, we do four sales a year. And on those sales, we're going to give you VIP access. So you can come to the store two hours before we open and you get to pick first as long as you spend two grand or something. These types of things exist. Um, I have a friend that does $250,000 a month in sales in Michael Kors purses. Just that's just that one brand. He is allowed to violate the 10 items per SKU rule that they have at outlets. And also he can shop when the store is closed. Totally unfair. I'm looking for things like that. Me too. So Me too. we can hack into that. But again, that takes time. And that's why this is a one year long journey. So please guys, if you're listening right now, like comment, subscribe to Sarah's channel and mine, you can follow the journey as we continue this. But again, you can accomplish almost nothing in a day. But if you just add those wins up after a year, you're going to be in a place that you never even dreamed you could be at. Cool. So I'm excited. So this week, just to summarize, we're doing um, our eventual goal is 50 to 100 items a week. Um, we're going to be continuing the cross list. I don't know how close you can get to finishing that. What do you think? Um, well, so, and you can probably speak to this a little bit. I have been researching eBay and I can't decide if it's better to list two items every single day for two weeks mm -hmm. or list as many items as I can as quick as I can. And sometimes it's five items, sometimes it's 20 items. I'm getting mixed things. And so I'm kind of leaning towards the same amount of items every single day. Um, Doesn't matter. But, okay. Um, no. then I can probably get through it pretty quickly. Um, I have about, well, now I have to do the math again. I have about 75 items left that can be cross posted from Poshmark to eBay. I can usually do, cause cross posting, I don't have to do all the other work. Um, mm -hmm. I can usually do 10 to 15 a day. So by this time next week, I could be close to done. I was nervous to be done cause then I have nothing to do on eBay. Um, don't be nervous because then we can focus on, um, getting inventory. So I'm not expecting you to get all 75 cross listed, but that would be a good goal. It, it doesn't matter. What matters is what you can do every week forever. So these 75 listings are small potatoes. It's not going to matter if you do one a day for 75 days or 75 in one day, just because it's what I'm worried about is somehow we're developing a machine that 50 cool purses come into a week and go out. So Sarah's purse um, collector is this machine that people, you know, ideally they would just insert their purse and get money out at the bottom. So we're trying to make an ATM for you. All right. Okay. Well, in that case, I will work on cranking out as many of those cross posting as I can and then work on um, finding new ways, sources of inventory. And probably not the goal for this week because we already have a lot to do, but eventually creating the process so that when you list on Poshmark, it just goes on the eBay at the same time. The ideal exposure is Poshmark and eBay at the same time because both eBay and Poshmark spend a lot of money on ads. Oh, yes, yes. That is my normal. So, well, not my normal. I, I got Posh going for about a year and then mm. I started on eBay so anything new that I have goes to both of them. Right. Got it. But seven, 600 items in my closet, it's mm. taken time. And I have a small store, so I didn't want to be paying to list on eBay as well. But Perfect. any new items goes to both places. Perfect. So I love it. This is um, the transition from doing it on the side to earning a full-time income. And then, you know, you can grow it as big as you want, but it's just good to understand the mechanics of, figuring out all of the tasks we want to do and then eventually having the ability to outsource it if we want to. So um, why don't we tell everybody where they can find you on social media? 
Um, I am Sarah Styles LLC on everything: Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Poshmark, eBay, Etsy. I think that's it. Just awesome. <laughs> well, that's a lot. I can actually tell by your voice that you're a little bit nervous about how difficult this may be, but I just want you to re recognize that it's going to happen. We're just going to slowly eat this elephant one bite at a time. And it sounds crazy, right? You're going to have inventory coming to you and people helping you do it. It's not that crazy though. Tons of people do it. And it's going to feel weird when you're in a situation where you may not have to do anything. Uh, it sounds wonderful is what it sounds yeah. like. I, the nervousness in my um, voice right now mm -hmm. is I have no inventory, which as a reseller is very scary. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't have the option. I yeah. have to find a new source. So that's a very scary thing for me. I don't know. Like I can't just go to the thrift store on Saturday like I normally do. So that's mm -hmm. where some of that's coming from. Um, but I, know I love it. I feel like there's so many people with that same emotion right now. So everyone out there, stay safe. And we're going to do this once a week. So I appreciate your time, Sarah. And I'll see everybody next week. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to both of our channels. And we'll see you next time.